I was curious with you if there was a time when there was a disconnect between the way you were coming off to people versus the way you saw yourself inside. That's interesting. That's pretty much since I was seven or eight, that was the case just because of being black. How, how so? What do you mean? Well, so, you know, I, my, uh, my mother taught in the, the, the public schools in Baltimore. So, okay. And she did that for 40 years. And as a matter of fact, my parents met teaching the same high school. Really? Um, but uh, my mother's attitude was, I teach in the, in the public school, so he's not going there. My, my dad was like, public school's good enough for me, but, she was, but my mom kind of, she was the last word. So I always went to private school. Okay. And once I got to junior high and high school, it was predominantly white, predominantly upper middle class. Okay. And so I always felt like, to white people, I, was, I, I represented something, this black person, that to me, I was just Lance. I, you know, my, I wasn't my race. Uh, and, and to black people, as soon as they heard me talk, I was something other than black. Oh, that's interesting. So you, I always felt like I, I, I just I always felt like I never fit anywhere. The thing that's weird about it, it was a very small parochial school. So there are only about 20 kids in a, each class. When I say each class, I mean each grade. Right. So and it, it was this weird dynamic where uh, I kind of became the class whipping boy, like everybody started making fun of me. When you think back of that time up until fifth grade or whatever, what's the picture in your head of what your day-to-day -day existence was? Getting through the day so that I could get home and get lost in fantasy watching television. Really? Yeah. So I became addicted to television. And so for me, like, you know, I wanted to be all those cops. I wanted to be Bruce Lee. I wanted to be the guy that got the girl. Do you know what I mean? That got the girl. Because that was the other thing. I was, I was, I was, uh, I, I, I started uh, studying piano when I was six. Okay. And I started writing songs when I was seven. So I was also, also this, this weirdly romantic little kid. Like I wrote my first love song for this girl uh, in third grade and then I sang it to her. And I was waiting for this, this you know, cinematic TV response where she said, oh, that's wonderful. And I sang the song to her and there's this pause and then she's just staring at me and then she bursts out laughing and then she runs down the hall and she starts, tells everybody what I did. Oh, and then, then they start making fun of me. That's familiar. So, <laughs> yeah, and that was when I was seven years old. Do you remember the chorus of the song? Uh, oh, Gray, don't, I mean, I made up words just to make them rhyme. Don't be Mari Gray, you know I'm sorry, Gray, you know that I love you, oh, Gray. I mean, it was, you know, I was seven. Wow. Yeah. I, I was, this was not Mozart. Her. When did you grow and, and sort of like come into yourself uh, physically? Well, physically, I always, um, I was always a big kid. You were? Yeah. Did you ever just turn around and like clock somebody? I smacked somebody run once. I'm ashamed to say it was a girl. And it was in it was in fourth grade, um, and it was it was that class where the, all the kids were picking on me. There was this small landing that you could uh, uh, walk down to get to to the, the classroom in the basement, and also led out to the playground. And there was a kid sitting on the steps, and I thought, you know what? I bet I can jump over him. Right. So I went to jump over him, you know, and being eight or nine, I'm just not aware. And I, and I literally, with all my might, I jump over him and I bash my head into this ceiling. Right. So literally, like I saw stars and I got a huge welt on my head. And so um, I'm crying and then I'm, 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 my head is aching and all these kids were laughing at me and I don't even remember what, after it happened and I don't remember why, but they were just, they, I just, my memory is that they were just all laughing at me and she just happened to be the one closest to me that was laughing. And I just went back and I smacked the out of her. God, you know, it, it, I, I so relate to feeling that way in school, just like not having an ally. And I think it takes a long time to break that self down. Long time, long time. Like, did you feel re repercussions from feeling that way in a social group for a long time that you had to like re-examine? Constantly re I mean, even, even now I re-examine it. Really? Yeah, I mean, uh, industry events are not bad for me now because enough people recognize me that that'll start a conversation. But if I'm by myself, I'm just standing in a corner. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera and if you want to see the hour-long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.